These are exciting times for science. After many months of waiting, finally, the first photographs from the James Webb Space Telescope are going to be revealed to the world. This is a $10 billion project designed to put up in space one of the largest and most capable telescopes ever made. Now you may say, okay, why would Freemasons be excited about this? Two main reasons. Number one, as Masons, we are told that it is important for us to study the liberal arts and sciences. Among them, astronomy. I'll tell you a little bit more why later on in the show. And the second reason, this telescope was named after brother James Edwin Webb. Yeah, he was a Freemason. More about it here on this episode of The Winding Stairs. You have arrived at The Winding Stairs, a program dedicated to Masonic education and the art of self-improvement. I am your host, Juan Sepulveda, and I want to thank you for spending this time with me geeking out about science and astronomy. First, I want to say thank you to all our supporters on Patreons because their support allows us to make content like this. More details on them a little bit later. As an astronomy enthusiast, I could be here and make an hour long video for you. Don't worry, it's not going to be that long because so many details are exciting about what's just happening. Today, some of the first images are revealed that are going to showcase the furthest objects in our galaxy. Our eyes have never seen something as far as these photos are revealing. Now you may say, why was James Webb so influential that he would be considered as the namesake for this telescope? And I want to run you through some of the details that made him an influential individual for science and space exploration. This North Carolina native was an attorney, a businessman, and an under secretary of state in the Truman administration. He was then later tapped by John F. Kennedy, the president of the United States, to serve as the administrator for NASA. And he did so during the years of 1961 all the way up to 1967. In his tenure as administrator for NASA, he had a great impact on how things were done and the capability that this organization now had for space exploration and new discoveries. He had a particular vision that allowed this to happen. It is described like this. James Webb believed that NASA had to strike a balance between human spaceflight and science because such a combination would serve as a catalyst for strengthening the nation's universities and aerospace industry. When I was looking for information about his engagement in NASA and his communication with uh, President Kennedy, I came across a quote that I thought was very interesting. As you know, during this time, the president had challenged the country to reach the moon. So that was the number one focus for NASA. Now, in the conversations that they had, we found a quote that says, this is James Webb speaking to LBJ and Kennedy by saying, and so far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to run a program that's just a one shot program. If you want me to be the administrator, it's going to be a balanced program that does the job for the country. I think it's gutsy for him to have that kind of tone when speaking to these world leaders. But this was a man of vision that he wanted to make sure that this was not just a single job, oh, we reached the moon and that's it. He wanted to make sure that NASA was a sustainable organization that continued generating discoveries and inspiring generations for many years to come. During his tenure, he encouraged the development of robotic spacecraft. This is what allowed probes to be sent over to the moon, to Mars and Venus during his time as an administrator. This allowed for, gather, uh, for gathering data that would help in future missions, including the lunar landing mission. 
If you're a fan of astronomy, space exploration, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to have a few more episodes in a couple of weeks related to the lunar landing, its connection to Freemasonry, among many other things. So make sure that you don't miss it by following our show. During his administration, he was a very strong proponent for the development of what was called at the time the Large Space Telescope. This eventually was what generated the interest and the development of the Hubble Space Telescope. Until recently, the largest and most capable telescope to be superseded only by the James Webb Telescope. He was also involved in the early stages of the Apollo missions. One of them in particular stands out and has a very rich history that I will share later on, but this was uh, the Apollo, F Apollo 1 mission. Among the crew for this specific mission was Gus Grissom, another brother. Sadly, this mission ended in, in tragedy when the capsule, while sitting on the launch pad in a pre-test, it caught fire, taking the life of three crew members. Now, you can imagine the humanity of any individual to know that these people perished in inside of a capsule is, is very heartbreaking. But you can also imagine that there was a bond there uh, that Masons understand of one brother to another, and losing a brother in that manner must have been something very, very tragic and hurtful. Now, given this history and this impact of James Webb into the space exploration community, you can see how, oh, this was a simple decision. He was an advocate for the Large Space Telescope. It makes sense for this telescope to be named after him. But the naming of it didn't come without some resistance. In 2021, a group of over 1,200 scientists and space enthusiasts signed a petition to remove his name from the telescope. Their claim was that while he was the Undersecretary of State, he contributed to the persecution of the LGBTQ community by establishing some stringent rules that basically made it impossible for people from the LGBTQ community to be a part of federal government. NASA took this into consideration and they say that there was no evidence to substantiate or to justify the removal of his name from the records. To learn more about this uh, these allegations and the role that the U.S. government had in this kind of uh, situation, I encourage you to look into the Lavender Scare. The Winding Stairs is made possible by FreemasonryArt.com, the Masonic art store where I share the creations that I make. I recently created a Masonic pin display apron where you can proudly show all the pins in your collection. Every pin tells a story. It reminds you of that day where you met some brothers or that day when you had an incredible initiatic experience. If you have your pins confined to the darkness of a drawer, bring them from darkness to light by proudly displaying them in one of our Masonic pin display aprons. To see them and place an order today, go to freemasonryart.com. Now, I wanted to touch up on the Masonic background of Brother James Webb. As I mentioned, he was a North Carolina native, and while he was going to college at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, he joined Masonry under University Lodge number 408, Ancient Free and Accepted Masons. Later on, he transferred his membership to Oxford Lodge number 122, formerly Oxford Lodge number 396. I want to give a special thanks to Brother Rick Carter for his article that he published in The Mason Magazine, an official publication from the Grand Lodge of North Carolina, it made some of my research a lot easier, and I thank you for that. Now, as promised at the beginning of the episode, I mentioned that I was gonna touch on why is it important that Freemasons uh, study astronomy? Well, we are encouraged to study the liberal arts and sciences. This expands our knowledge, expands our connection to, to the world, but I really love how it's written, uh, the description of how we should be interested in astronomy. And it is described as the sublime science which inspires the contemplative mind 
to soar aloft and read the wisdom, strength, and beauty of the great creator in the heavens. I find that beautiful because that connection that we create between us and the grand architect of the universe is further stimulated whenever we look at the beauty of the heavens. So whenever you see the pictures that are being revealed from the James Webb Telescope, I encourage you to think about the grandeur of the great architect of the universe. Find that connection and get to understand a little bit more that expression that says, as above, so below. Now, I have a genuine question for you. Did you enjoy this episode, this kind of conversation? Is this something that you find interesting? If so, please help me expand the reach of this show by sharing this with at least one brother. Who is that brother that likes astronomy, that likes to learn about Masonic education? Please make sure to share this program with him. Also, thank you so much for those of you who have chosen to be active participants of The Winding Stairs by supporting us on Patreon. Those of you who support us on Patreon get early access to some of the episodes, get some behind the scenes look at what we're doing here, and you have a voice and a vote on future episodes. To learn more, make sure to go to patreon.com slash Juan Cipollino. I hope that you found this episode to be inspiring, to be entertaining, and to be something that you want to make a part of your daily Masonic education. Until next time, may your steps be firm and your path illuminated as we continue our journey up the winding stairs. Thank you.